Hey guys, welcome to Bambi TV. Guys, we're gonna be reacting to Ahmed did that answers. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Guys, this is a question that I personally have had for Muslims, and this these are reasons why some Christians actually we don't actually believe in some things we see because we already believe that Jesus said He is the way. I believe if we like if you know answers to questions Christians are asking, like questions that make us believe in what we believe in. And if there is a way you can disprove it and it makes sense. Yes, I feel most Christians will convert because if you can tell them that yo, this is wrong and this is the right path, like I feel everybody that really just wants to follow the right path, if we be honest. Like Let's forget about Christianity and Islam. But even to be honest, we want to make heaven. That is the goal. That is like that what we strive for because we know our time on earth is short. Sometimes we feel that we have like 75 years, but like 75 years minimum. But sometimes we go at 30, 25. Like we don't know where we are going, so we have to make every moment count. Guys, let's get straight into this. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. My my question is one of curiosity. If if the Muslim believes in Jesus Christ as being a prophet, then I assume that means that they're revering his message and what he was. So my curiosity is one in the Christian description of him, say by the prophet Isaiah, when he's referred to as the coming Messiah being Emmanuel, translated as God with us, and also in the men that he was with, that he trained up, who, when they relate his story, relate frequent insta instances where he, they say that no man comes to God but through me, and that I am the bread, the truth, the life, that I am God. So it's, I'm curious about how you handle that. It's a very, very pertinent and straightforward question. Straight request, you know, it calls for my response on that level. You see, uh, there are quotations in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament where a description is given about somebody, something, maybe the Messiah. He says, and he shall be called, I'm quoting, called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He shall be called Emmanuel. Now I'm asking people, I said, look, you've got 27 books in the New Testament. 27 books. In any one of these books, is it ever mentioned anywhere that Jesus was ever called Emmanuel? Was he called Emmanuel? He was called Jesus. He was called the Messiah. He was called the bread of life. He was called the, <laughs> the truth of God. All that, the word of God. Was he ever called Emmanuel in any one of these 27 books? Was he? No. So, it means he's not referring to him. He shall be called. Like you see, the man comes along, he's going to lecture to you people on the subject, uh, two pictures of Jesus, Quranic and Biblical, and that man shall be called the Messiah. Now, did anybody call me Messiah? No. So it's, there's no fulfillment. Can you see? If I wasn't called Messiah, I'm not the Messiah. He was called, and he, nobody ever called him. He shall be called. I said, you see, that refers to Muhammad. Because Muhammad, you see in the Quran, in the Holy Quran you read, that Muhammad and Abu Bakr at the flight, they were in a cave and they were almost being caught out. And Abu Bakr says, he says, look man, they are almost, they are upon us. We are done for. And Muhammad says, Inna Allah ma'ana, Emmanuel. Inna Allah, God is with us. Emmanuel. Muhammad said that, not Jesus. Jesus on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. You see, at the critical moment, when you have God with you, who says that? Muhammad says that. Inna Allaha Ma'ana, which is the exact translation of Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus says, according to your record, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God is not with him. He's forsaken by God. That's at the critical moment. So this is not referring, nowhere referring to Jesus. With regards to Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
Mr. D. Dad, what have you to say to that? I said, I have to respond. He did say that. I am the way. He is the way. You see, in the context now, let's have a look at it in the context. You see, the disciples of Jesus misunderstood everything. Everything he spoke, they misunderstood. And his present day disciples and followers misinterpret everything he uttered with apologies. You see, this is in John chapter 14. At the beginning, we are told, Jesus says, In my father's house there are many mentions. Had it not been for so, uh, so, I would have told you. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. You know where I'm going, and you know how to get there. In other words, I assume you understand what I'm talking about. He's telling his disciples. You know where I'm going and you know how to reach that destination. So they say, Lord, we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way? In other words, they misunderstood. Jesus is talking about spiritual matters, spiritual goals, spiritual destination. They are thinking of geographical locations, Washington, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, what? They think, it's a look, we don't know where you are going and how are we going to get there? Look, misunderstanding. He's talking about spiritual things, they are thinking of geographical, geographical places. So Jesus in answer to that says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It means if you want to know where I'm going, look at me. The way to God is personified in me. Look at me. The truth of God is personified in me. Look at me. True life is personified in me. Look at me. If you follow me, you will reach your destination. And they misunderstood again. No, it was too heavy for them. Too heavy for them, for his disciples. The simple statements, they can't understand. Everything they're misunderstanding. So they said, look, Lord, show us the Father and it suffice at us. Look, all this you're talking about is too heavy for us. Too heavy. We don't know what you're talking about. Just show us God. If you can see God, we'll be satisfied. In answer to that, Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. You know, you ought to know better than that. You are a Jew. And as a Jew, you know, no man can see God and live. God is not seen at any time. That's what the scriptures say. He's not seen at any time. And no man can see God and live. If you see God, you'll be consumed. And you with me for so long? And you still asking such a silly, making such a silly request? You want to see God with your bodily eyes when you can't look at the sun? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Meaning, if you understood what I am, you would have understood what God is. Same John is talking other places. Seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Means you see and you don't see. If you have seen me, meaning not physical seeing, because Philip had no defect in his eyes. If he had, Jesus would have healed him. If he can heal other people from the blindness, why not his disciple of his defect in sight? No, he's not talking about physical sight. Means if you have seen me, he had that has seen me. Means if you understood what I am, you would have understood what God is. You wouldn't, you wouldn't make such a silly request. Wanting to see God with your bodily eyes. Way to God, you see, that every prophet of God in his own time, in his own dispensation, is the only way to God. In the time of Moses, Moses was the way to God. If you wanted another way, the children of Israel chose another way through the golden calf, for which 24,000 people were killed. The Jews, killing Jews. God's command says, destroy them. This rubbish, you know, they're worshipping a calf, kill them. One book says 23,000, other says 24,000. We're killed for that. Why? Because they chose another way. There's only one way to God. is through the way of the prophet of God. The prophet of the time, he tells you, in the time of Noah, Noah was the way to God. You want to be saved? Get into the ark. That's all. No fasting, no prayer, no zakat, no pilgrimage, nothing. Just get into the ark. Salvation is yours. That's all. You see, he's the way to God. Anybody who got in, saved. From physical destruction as well as spiritual destruction. Listening, hearken to the prophet of God. In the time of Jonah, Jonah was the way. In the time of Jesus, Jesus was the way. In the time of Muhammad, this is his dispensation. Muhammad is the way. If you want another way, it will not be accepted from you. Because Christ told you that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He had the message. He had the solutions. But now he didn't have the time. The poor man is on the run. As soon as he opened his mouth, the Jews were after his blood. 
And a man on the run, he's got no time to give you all the teaching. So he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He said, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. And we are prepared to reason with you. Let us have a dialogue. I have written a book called What the Bible Says About Muhammad. This deals with prophecies from the Old Testament. I have delivered a lecture on Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ. It's available on videotape. I haven't had a chance to write the book yet. But inshallah, God willing, I'll write the book. You see? So in other words, now let us have a dialogue. Who is the spirit of truth? Who is the comforter? And what does this mean when he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. He is the way to God. He is not the goal. To the Christian, he is the goal. He is not the way. He said, we must talk and reason how I see it, how you see it. And by that we might arrive at truth. What truth is, really is. Yes, I... Okay, okay. Yes, guys, I will say for Christians, Jesus isn't the goal. I believe for any religion, heaven is the goal. And it's the same with us. And it's the same with us Christians. All Christians I know, heaven is the goal. Like, heaven is what we pray for. Like, that is the end point. I won't say heaven is the end point. End point is supposed to go and come back again because it's written in the Bible that we're still going to be tested again. So, <laughs> yes. So, after that. So, he said a lot. And I... I don't know if, to be honest, like the answers he gave made sense, but I just can't take it. Now someone say I'm stupid. Let me give you my reasons why. Because you're like he is explaining something. Like <laughs> the verse says this, and he's trying to explain the verse. And when it gets to a point where the verse goes exactly with him, he just said that is true. And if he used some con like some statement in the verse that goes with him, he will say it's true. But if the statement does not go, he will say let's read the contest. So I'm having a problem with like believing what he's saying in the sense that he isn't actually like he isn't actually taking the verse for what it is. Like when the verse says Jesus said it's the way the truth and light. I love the fact he went through the contest because it was very, very obvious that the disciples were not understanding what he was saying. Yes, I accept that fact. But like, when he said, Jesus said, Father, my Father, my Father, oh my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? If you go to the contest, you will know why Jesus got to that point that he said it. And I will say this, for the fact Jesus was not called, for the fact it was not documented that Jesus was called a man -made does not mean he was not called Imam because when Mary was naming him, Mary actually called him Muhammad. So, um, Emmanuel. So, I mean, that saying Jesus was not called Emmanuel is... He was actually called Emmanuel when Mary was naming him. But throughout the verse, he was called Jesus or Yeshua. Yes. But, like, he was called Emmanuel. And I believe some details were lost and... I, I really feel like the Bible is, is like in contest in a way. Like there are some books that make that bring things closer, like theologians. Like theologians can tell you a lot of things that were not found in the Bible, like a lot. And that's why like most Christians when they finish, like maybe what done with school and most of us go search of like we become surgeons, we want to know more about the Bible. Like, I feel I'm already at that part now. And God being faithful, when I'm done with school, I'm going straight on that part. Like, I, I really want to know what is there because I believe that we are on this earth. I believe that we are on this earth to know God. Even be honest with ourselves. Like, that is our main go our focus that's what we came here to do because we are nothing without him and i see no reason why sh we shouldn't study him and understand him understand what he wants from us and i love the fact that a lot of you in my comments actually helped me like direct me to the right path but i still want you to understand it for where i am so you can correct me because i feel if you understand 
where I'm coming from, like questions I'm asking, you can actually be able to correct me and take me to the right path. But okay, I thank you for actually staying here to this time. They should like, share, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time, guys. Peace.